Chris Rollins here from Allwood Audubon. You might wonder what Audubon is. With National Audubon, we're an environmental organization that protects birds and other animals and their habitats. But right now, our focus really is to make sure that we all get through this together and build up our morale a little bit. So today, we're going to talk about food. I love food. It's one of my favorite meals with food. Everything. Lunch, breakfast, dinner, snacks, in between snacks, in between the in between snacks. I like to eat. Now, why do we eat? Well, we eat to get energy. Every living thing needs energy. If it's alive, it needs energy. We're alive, so we need energy. Uh, animals, cats and dogs are alive. They need energy. Trees are alive. They need energy. Now your floor is not alive, so it doesn't need energy. But flowers that are coming up right now, they're alive, so they need energy. Every living thing needs energy. I want you to sing that with me. I want you to sing. Energy, energy, every living thing needs energy. Sing that. Energy, en no, 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 no. I'm not feeling it. Some of you are not singing. Most of you are just staring, there staring at me. you got this look on your face, you know. I call that look TV face. It's the same look when you go flip that TV on, just... The worst thing is, you know, we let that happen too long, so we gotta shake it up a little bit. Bring your arms up, roll your arms around, and you sing, energy, energy, every living thing needs energy. Sing that, energy, energy, every living thing needs energy. Roll your arms, energy, energy, every living thing needs energy. We get it from the food we eat. Every living thing needs energy. We're going to start with plants, because plants produce all of our food energy. Whether you believe it, it's true. Whether you have a hamburger, a hot dog, a salad, a snicker bar today, all that food energy starts with plants. We call them producers because they produce food energy. They take things that are not food, and they turn it into food energy. So, I say plant, you say producer. Plant. Come on, plant, producer, plant, producer. You don't have to yell. Why do we call plants producers? That's right, because they make their own food. Plants are producers. They make their own food from sunlight, water, and CO2. They take your bad breath, and they can turn it into food energy. Could explain why onions smell so bad. They take sunshine, turn it into food energy. Plants are producers. They make their own food from sunlight, water, and CO2. Better known as what? That's right, your bad breath. Mixed all together is what plants need. Every living thing needs energy. Roll those arms. Energy, energy. Every living thing needs energy. Sing it. Energy. That's right, let's say it again. I say plant, you say producer. Plant, come on, plant. Why do we call plants producers? That's right, because they make their own food. Now, are you a plant? No. You, you may be a couch potato right now, but you are not a plant. We are people, people are animals. All animals are consumers. Everybody say, I am a consumer. That's right, the first thing is just to admit it. If it's an animal, it's a consumer's. Consumers take things that have food energy in them and eat them, they consume them. Consumers are animals, they like to eat. Some eat plants, some eat meat, some eat both. Now you see, every living thing needs energy. Roll those arms. So, plants are producers, they produce food energy, animals are consumers, they consume that energy, but eventually, those leaves fall off the trees, 
the trees will die. It's the way of life. It's nature. But this is where the last group comes in. Don't worry. There's one more group. They are nature's recyclers. They are the fungus right back here, the bacteria. They take food energy and turn it into a whole new thing. They can take dead stuff and turn it back into nutrients. They are nature's recyclers. So I'm going to say decomposer. Then say it after me. Ready? Decomposer. Come on. Decomposer. Let me hear you. Decomposer. Good. Now say decomposers break down dead things. Decomposers break down dead things like old dead animals and fallen trees. Fungus, bacteria, mushrooms too. Recycle for producers to make into food. Roll your arms. Energy. Energy. Every living thing needs energy. Do it again. job. That's right. Hey, speaking of energy, I want to introduce you to one of my friends, one of my animal friends who has lots and lots of energy, but I have to go get dressed a little different, so I will be right back. Hi guys, we're back and uh, I brought my buddy Gary the Groundhog with us. I know we're all hibernating at home right now and who better to tell you all about hibernation than uh, Gary. So, Tell them all about what you do during the winter. Hit it, Gary. Ready? In winter, there's not much to eat. So to get through the winter, groundhogs sleep. We eat and eat, gain lots of weight. Go into the den and hibernate, yeah. I hibernate, that's what I do. To get through the winter when you can't find food. It's not just sleep when you hibernate. Drop the body temperature down and that heart rate. My body temperature goes almost to freezing. My heart rate slows to where it almost stops beating. I live off the fat from all the food I eat. Yep, that's what it takes to hibernate. Yeah, now you're getting it. Hey, Gary, tell them about your burrow. Dig this. I dig long, deep burrows. Lay down dry leaves. I have different chambers to serve my needs. One's a bathroom and one's for sleep. Yeah, one's where they keep all the food they eat. You see, I might wake up and have to poop and pee. Don't want to go outside. That's dangerous for me. Just like a Boy Scout, I'm always prepared. Yep, everything they need to hibernate down there. Yeah, I hibernate. That's what I do to get through the winter when they can't find food. It's not just sleep when you hibernate. Drop the body temperature down and that heart rate. My body temperature goes almost to freezing. My heart rate slows to where it almost stops beating. I live off the fat from all the food I ate. Yep, that's what it takes to hibernate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, check this out. All right, what, what, what do you got for us, Gary? Give it to me. My heart rate drops from 80 beats a minute. Yeah, to only four beats. Yep, and that's not it. My temperature drops from 98 degrees to 38 degrees. That's just above freezing. Yeah, everything in my body starts slowing. Even my teeth stop growing. I curl up like a ball, press my nose against my bum. Ew, I guess hibernation's not for everyone. You got that. Hibernate, that's what I do. To get through the winter when they can't find food. It's not just sleep when I hibernate. Drop the body temperature down and that heart rate. My body temperature goes almost to freezing. My heart rate slows to where it almost stops beating. I live off the fat from all the food I ate. Yep, that's what it takes to hibernate. Mm. Mm, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit of the H-I-T's coming on. H-I-T? Yeah, hibernation inducement trigger. I gotta go to sleep. Good night, everybody. All right, good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. While Gary sleeps, uh, you guys just keep safe and uh, have some fun staying at home with Mom and Dad, and uh, we'll see you more with... Uh, Allwood Audubon's Chris's Critters, uh, coming soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye now.
Hi guys. Hey, Gary had so much fun singing to you, I thought it'd be really great if we drew a picture of him to, to say thanks. So uh, everybody grab yourself a pen and some paper or a pencil and we'll draw Gary together. All right. First, we're going to start with Gary's eyes. Some big, googly Gary eyes. You saw all that words. So just make two big circles. Normally I draw everything really light, but so you can see it, I'm going to draw them really dark. So we're going to make two big circles for Gary's eyes. And then now we're going to make him sort of cross-eyed just for fun. I'm going to make his iris right here and his pupil. Now if you want to get fancy, you can make the pupil, the dark part, sort of a half moon shape like that and color it in nice and dark and that little circle in the middle is where the light shines on Gary's eye and then you can make it not as dark around the edges because Gary has some brown eyes he had pretty brown eyes so we'll put his eyes in here here we go I'm gonna make this one a little bigger just for fun you always want that light coming from the same direction. So make your little half moon shape. Color in that dark pupil. And then a little lighter. And I'm going in straight lines. If you guys look how I'm doing them back and forth. And that sort of creates a nice look to the eye. Because if you look at your eyes, there are all those lines that go in and out. And just for fun, we can put a little bit of light shading underneath, just for fun, because he has those big pink punk ball eyes, so we want a little shade down here as well. Now let's make his nose. Gary has a pretty big nose. We're going to give him a nice nose again. Sort of a little curly V up on top, like a vulture. And then it curls down below, makes some little semicircles. Here's the start of his nose. Now if you want to, we can make some lines just like this. Now I didn't, I'm not doing them hard, doing them really soft. You can sort of see the lines. Now let's make his mouth. Now his mouth, he has his little clip in the middle. And then we're going to make sort of like a, a little long slooping down and then coming back up. That'll be part of his smile. And we'll make it over here, come down, and then swoop it back up. Make a nice smile, that's good. And we'll give it a little shade. If you give it just a little bit of shade, it makes it look a little more 3D. Now, of course, Gary had, what do you have, two big teeth right in the middle there to help him chew on that wood. So we'll give him some, some of that big teeth right there. And, there we go, put a little shade in, a little bit of shade just for fun. Give him his whiskers. I'm going to give him a couple little lines here, and just little dots. Nothing big, just little squeegees as you guys see. I'm putting in just little squigglies. And we're going to put his whiskers in there. We'll get back to those whiskers. So, I want to make his big head right here. Oh, let's give a little bit 3D to his eyes. Give him a little eyebrow, a little action up here. Little eyebrow action. Looking sort of like Groucho Marx. You guys are saying, who's Groucho Marx? I'm old. I know Groucho Marx. All right, let's do the top of his head. Of course, Gary's really fuzzy. So we're going to make that fuzz up here. And I'm just doing squiggles, just back and forth, just doing a little bit of squiggling. Make his cheeks a lot bigger here. So I'm squiggling down around the eyes. You can see I've sort of gone around the eyes and right down about halfway by the eye, I start to make it squiggle out for those big cheeks, those big groundhog cheeks, so he can get his work done. We need some ears. Gary's got to have his ears. So we can make some little squiggle lines up there too for his ears and bring those down. And then we'll do another line inside. And put a little pencil mark in for the shade. 
And let's do that same thing over on the other side here. How's your gear? Oh, your Gary's are betting it'll turn out really good. I'm going to be excited to see it. Show them, Gary. All right. There we go. So we've got our ears, we've got our eyes, and we can put a little bit, little bit of lines right around the eyes. You can, you can add all kinds of stuff in here if you want to add some more fur in there. Anything you want to do with your picture, it's your picture. Have fun with your picture, and let's put his big whiskers. We'll give him some big whiskers coming out. Animals need those whiskers to feel around with. It's another sense for them, sensory organ. So uh, we'll put those on there. Oh, we need to give Gary a big body. And give him some hair on the sides. So I'm just gonna put two curvy lines on the edges here. Now, we're gonna curve in to make his horn. Here's our curve. So just one curve down. So get that curve. And then we're gonna come up here and this is gonna be the part of his forearm. So we're going to put a line there, a little curve, and I'm going to put, oh, you know what? What do groundhogs like to munch on? They like to munch on nice big twigs and branches and stuff. So we'll give Gary a nice big leaf. Let's make it a dandelion leaf. Gary loves dandelions. Dandelions actually have lots of wonderful energy in them. As you guys remember, we talked about plants are producers. They produce food energy. So we'll give Gary a nice little dandelion to eat. And we'll put that nice flower in here. And if you want, like I said, you can color these in. Color that dandelion flower nice and yellow. Bright yellow. There we go. Give Gary his little dandelion leaves there. So I'm going to put the rest of his finger in. And all you have to do for his thumb and his finger, just put a couple little lines in there. That will work. That looks pretty good. Now well, let's put this other hand behind his back. He might be holding another dandelion. So we're just going to take another line, a big curve here, and we're going to curve it around because Gary had a good hibernation, so he had a lot of food. So we'll curve it down here. And you know what? Let's make him holding another dandelion behind him. So we'll put that. Put all those wonderful little dandelion flowers. You know, each one of those little petals is an individual flower. This is a composite flower, dandelions are. So if you want to get mom a bouquet real quick, all you have to do is grab her one dandelion. You got a whole bouquet there. It's a nice composite. All right, so we're going to finish up this leaf here, this little dandelion leaf, nice and green. Like we said, leaves are the food making factories for plants. They take sunlight, water, CO2, turn it into food energy. All right, to grow that flower. Okay, let's put the other side of his belly. Now we've got his arm coat, so go about oh, three quarters of the way over. Here's where the rest of his body's coming down. He's nice and round. And we're going to give him feet. Now we're just going to make a couple big lumps. I'm going to come up here and make one lump. And then we'll make two lumps. And we'll make three lumps. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to make one lump and two lumps. And let's do another lump right there. And we're going to put his little claws. And all we have to do is make a little upside down V and put a circle over it sort of like it's an ice cream cone. So in this one we're going to go a little straighter since this toe's looking straight at us a little bit more. And this one's curved the other way. So we're, this one we curved out and this one we're going to curve out into the belly or inside his belly. And it'll make his little cone. And we can color those in a little darker. Now if you want to do them you can uh, give him some blue nails, you can give him some rainbow nails, you can do whatever you want if you want to color him, but I just have my pencil here. So we're going to do it on the same other side here. So we'll make our little up, our V and make our curve and we'll make another V and our curve and this one we'll make another little V and a curve. There we go. And we're going to color those in a little bit. Just give it a little bit of shading 
There we go. And we can put some grass in the middle. All you have to do with your doing grass, just up and down. As you guys see, grass, as you know, outside, it's nice and squiggly. So we can put that. We can even put another dandelion here. He, he's going to have a nice food fest after all that time of hibernation. He's going to have all these great dandelions that are going to give him all his energy. Put another row of those petals out here. couple leaves, always have to have those leaves, give it energy. There we are. And we can put a couple more over here if you want. If you want to go outside and see the flowers, you might have a lot of flowers growing in your backyard. I know Gary's going to be getting into our garden too. And always remember, sign your name and put the date. That way you know when you did it, and you will be able to look back and remember all this wonderful stuff. You can put some clouds in the back, as Bob Ross would say, some happy clouds. You can have that happy clouds back here, over and up. You could put a big tree along the side, coming up over here. Whatever you want to do, this is your, this is your piece of art. There we go. So I'm just putting in a few more flowers. I thought, I thought it'd be fun to put in a couple more flowers. Spring's here, and if you look outside, all those wonderful flowers are starting to burst out and finish up this tree back here. We'll put a tree coming in. And I've got the tree coming into the cloud. So I got a cloud and a tree right there. Uh, and I'm going to play around with this maybe a little bit more. Stay tuned for more of Chris's Critters uh, with Allwood Audubon, National Audubon Society. We look forward to seeing you guys and stay healthy. We're all going to get through this. Well, bye now.